Nation. This next historic battle is three five minute rounds in the super welterweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of seven wins and no losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 79.8 kilograms. Representing Fight Move Academy and fighting out of New Chanta, Switzerland. Please welcome Magomed Ashkano. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 19 wins, seven losses, and one draw. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 79.2 kilograms. Representing Zenith Fit Fabric and fighting out of Lodz Poland. Please welcome Marcin Bamba. Your referee is Peter Yarish. Brave Nation, as you may have figured out, Bamba is short for bomb. It means in the Brave Combat Federation debut. Ready, fight this. Ready, fight. It's no mistake what Bandel wants to do, but like the Ronda Rousey armbar, how do you prevent the specialists from doing what they do so well, Kieran? Put them on their back and pass the guard on the takedown and stay away from those legs. Get in top side control, probably don't even bother going for mount. Ride from north south, ride from the side. Or alternatively, keep it standing and throw big shots just like that. Bandel trying to land a hook as he's going back. So much harder to generate power on the back foot. Ashkinov throwing a little bit wild. Oh, your shot! Good shot from Bamba! Short could be short time now! Trying to roll for is that an Americana? Can't quite see. The leg is trapped, Bill! Face lock! Huge shot from Bamba. Bamba by name, Bamba by nature. Great work from Ashkanov to get back to his feet. I don't think he's ever been hit like that in his professional career. Ashkanov is a monster to have survived that onslaught. Take down trip. Look out for the arm bar. Back take from Bomber. This is not where you want to be. In. Hips gonna start sinking down now. It's a shark infested water. Hips have sunk. Ice can off, still fighting. Still fighting. He's trying to get his thigh. This can be a nice step. Another first round submission for Marcy and Bomber. Submission on a Kaufman's record was two minutes and two seconds. That is crazy. How does he do it? Hans Magomed Ashkanov, the first defeat in his professional career, but Marcin Bomba Bandal, 27 and 1 now, with 20, or sorry, with 18 wins. By a first round submission. That's crazy. It, it may be the record in our sport, Phil. I'm the official records keeper for the North for, for commissions in North America. I don't recall ever seeing that anywhere in the entire history of the sport. We absolutely may have seen history in the making here. Huge congratulations to the winner, Marcin Bomba Bandel. He may have just been awarded a belt. I'm looking there. He may have just been awarded a black belt in jiu-jitsu. If so, this is an impossibly special moment to communicate. Winning a fight on the global stage and being awarded your black belt in jiu-jitsu at the same time is, is an, an honor that I, I don't have the words to convey. Drake now proudly in the Polish flag. We're getting to watch a replay of the end. You see a half Nelson there breaking the opponent down. It pulls out that supporting arm as intense pressure comes from the hips. 
punches rain down. The purpose of the punches is not necessarily at all to stop the opponent. It's to do just that. It's to set up a submission. That forearm is getting very, it's a face lock. This is a high, high level submission. It's been seen very, very rarely, but his friend of Brave Combat Federation, Habib Nurmagomedov, has shown it is a devastating submission. Let's let the Los Carlos Kramer make it official for us. Incredible Poland, what do you have to say about that? This fight comes to an end at one minute and 38 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by rear naked choke from Poland, Marcin Banda. This next battle is your co-main event of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in the super welterweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 14 wins and three losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 78.1 kilograms. Representing Piranha Valley Tudo and fighting out of Paribuna, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Please welcome Luis Felipe Diaz. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 20 wins, seven losses, and one draw. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 79.65 kilograms. Representing Zenith Fit Fabric and fighting out of large Poland. Please give it up for Marcin Bamba Bantel. Bringing the fighters in, just reading them and making sure they understand their obligations to themselves and one another. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Expect to see a frenetic start fight. to this fight. Both men occupying low stances. It took Marcin Bandal just 38 seconds to win his brave CF debut back in Conan Poland. He's trying to get in on the takedown. May look to triple leg here. Good job from Diaz to stall so far. And here comes the flare double. And this is where Marcin is incredibly dangerous. When both fighters are dry, they're not slick with sweat just yet. Diaz, unfortunately for him, overcommitted a little bit on those shots. And he's paying the price right here. Nice head positioning there from Bandel. Landing enough strikes to keep himself honest. When you look at some of the guys that Marcin Bandel has been in over the course of his career, guys like David Bilkadin, Michael Labou, Stevie Ray, Marabek Tasimov, he has faced upper echelon fighters without a shadow of a doubt. Keylock attempt coming from bottom. Not very close yet. Back take coming up. No hooks in yet. There's one hook in. Marcin Bandal does have two wins via rear naked choke. One on one on the far side with a leg ride on the near side. And, this and is heavy, heavy shots coming in. Brave Nation, we are about a meter from these two fighters and the sound of the leather, leather hitting head is profound. He's absolutely pinging those shots underneath the armpit, above the armpit. And this is what Bandel does so well. He's obviously in shape, but he is deceptively strong. Has the strength of a heavyweight when he gets in there and just does this blanket style of suppression wrestling. He's got at least two different, at least three different routes he can go now. He's keeping his head above his opponent. Raining down heavy shots. And he's not wasting any energy. He's keeping himself nice and tight. He's methodical. Landing strikes when he has to, to try and create openings. 
Diaz has gone two on one in the arm. He's going to try and bring that over his arm like a baseball bat swing, get his head underneath the armpit of Bandal. Good job to get back to the feet, but straight away, Bandal in, trying to get in on the single. Fence grab. Bamba absolutely relentless on that leg. Big strikes being landed by Bomba. Finally defeated, and he's back in. Another takedown. Key locks in place, but not for long. Bandel trying to decide if he's going to go left, right, or stay in center and land some shots. So heavy with the hips. Again, Bamba's body is stretched out. Diaphragm's not compressed. Diaz cannot say the same. Got a, one trapped arm. Phil, we may have two trapped arms. Maybe working for that reverse crucifix, like Gary Goodridge back in the day. It's exactly what we've got. That's a little bit of a throwback. Potential here to get the Kimura. Potential here to elbow the head. Potential here to have a little scramble back up to standing. And again, Bamba relentless with this grappling-based attack. Good job from Luis Felipe Diaz to get back to the feet. But every time he does that, he ends up on his back. So he expels all that energy to get up to his feet and then finds himself now in the mounted position. The BJJ black belt is now mounted. This is not where you want to find yourself against somebody as well-versed, credentialed, and dangerous as Marcin Bandal. Oh, nasty elbows. It's not just the concussive effect. It's the cuts they can throw. We've got an armbar set up. Now it's partially gone. Yeah, Luis Felipe Diaz was wise to it. Just Triangle changed. set up now. 10 seconds to go. Is he going to be happy just to punch from here? Good escape. Oh, tried to go for the uppercut hook combination. But that first round was very much all about Marcin Van Dam. Extremely impressive round and if you're in the for the fighter from Poland. If you're in the corner of Marcin, all you're going to say right now is lather, rinse, repeat, keep doing what you're doing. And that poses the question, if you're in the corner of Luis Felipe Diaz, what are you saying to him? I know exactly what you tell him. Don't set down on the shots the way you have been. Yeah. Don't try and take him out with a single shot. Get in your bicycle a little bit, be a little herky-jerky, move in and out, pot shot him a little bit from the outside, and download information on that, and then at the moment you choose, then you throw that huge shot. Yeah. But do not start that way. There you see just every time that Luis Felipe Diaz thought that he was getting an underhook, thought that he was getting to his feet, thought that he was doing something proactive. It was completely shut down by Marcin. There we see the old school reverse crucifix. And Phil Bamba is showing us not just incredible technique, but also incredible strength. That fire plug body is possessed of enormous power. Diaz looking across the Brave Combat Federation cage with truly bad intentions. Little glove touch first, no hard feelings. Time to face punch. Diaz trying to take it right to Bandal with the strikes. If he's sitting down too much on those punches, we know exactly what's going to happen. Diaz is doubling down on his strategy. Having some big luck with it. Oh, Landing a, shots. Malpice is out. But Bandal lands straight away. Fire fight here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Marcin was within his rights to say the mouthpiece had fallen out. He was not within his rights to, in effect, call for a timeout. Yeah. That's up to up. Those punches he received in the face 
were not anyone's fault but his own. That's up to the discretion of the referee, and it's up to the referee to separate, to get in amongst the fighters and separate. I wonder if we could see another replay of that just to see. According to the Unified Rules of Mixed Martial Arts, Brave Nation, when a mouthpiece goes out, the referee takes notice of it, and at that point when he can stop the action and not give one fighter or the yeah. other an advantage, he then puts the mouthpiece back in, if necessary, rinsing it. A natural break in the action, yeah. A little bit of venom now, a little bit of needle in the fight. I want to repeat, the referee did not do anything wrong there. That's smart of Diaz, showing him the uppercut when he's going to come in low. Diaz absolutely determined to take his opponent out of there. That just, that's just how quickly a fight can turn in mixed martial arts. Marcin Bandal exactly where he wants to be. Not even a minute in, and Bamba is right where he feels safe. Veteran move, covering the mouth with the glove. Perfectly legal as long as the fingers don't go in the mouth. Landing just these little pot shots so the referee doesn't stand them up. As you say, pretty much a full round to work with. Yeah. He's in absolutely no rush to get the job done. Bandel now has multiple, multiple options from inside guard. He can start to set up a leg attack. He can further his position. He can ground and pound from inside guard. And it's Probably going to try and pass that half guard. It's just such an intelligent, systematic methodology that he goes through every time. It's, there's no wasted energy. It's all, it's all smart sequential movements and smart sequential work from Marcin. Doesn't do anything without purpose at all. No wasted energy. Momentarily looked like he was thinking about a head on triangle if he could get himself free. By the way, that shot that Bamba took when he was telling the referee the mouthpiece was missing, that man can take a shot. In order to not get stood up, Bamba needs to do just a little bit more. There you go. Dam more damaging shots. There, and then now he's furthering his position. Uh, the the quasi-crucifix position from the half guard, showing his dexterity and flexibility. At least for another 10 seconds or so, Bamba's put himself in good position to stay here where he wants to be. Referee typically will ask for action before standing the fighters up. He's landing. None of these are shots are particularly concussive, but the frequency with which he's landing them prevents the referee from standing the fight up as he's being active. And he's threatening not just with strikes, but also with forwarding his position. He's now going to probably dig back inside that underhook, which he's done. Those elbows can be big. Elbow to the ribs from that position can cause real damage to the rib area. He's doing a good job of framing off with the forearm. Forcing that into the face, making it uncomfortable. It's, and, oh, trying to set up that head arm if he can get himself free. He was looking for it earlier. He's trying to move to mount. And if he was successful, he'd probably pop all the way to side control on the far side. Less than a minute to work with in the second round. Very dominant display of grappling and ground control from Bomba. Thirty seconds, Brave Nation. Bomba likely to go for something big in the waning seconds of the round. Luis Felipe Diaz cutting a frustrated figure off his back here. Ten 
nine second clapper. Again, just so dominant as Marcin Bandel. A second great round for Bamba. He is now very clearly up 20 to 18 in this bout. Highly unlikely he can lose by decision at this point. Big deep breath kicking in there by Luis Felipe Diaz. He has to be wondering, what do I need to do to get a little bit of an edge? And to be fair to him, he was doing really well with the striking. He was. Luis Felipe Diaz, I believe, needs to stop his opponent. It is highly, highly, highly unlikely he's going to do that by submission unless he stuns his, his opponent first. What he needs to do is stun his opponent. However, I don't think he can throw with 100% power and, and in all likelihood have that happen. I think he needs. I think he's a great striker. I just think he needs to set him up a little bit more. That was a big strike that knocked the mic piece out of the, out of the mouth of... Marcin Bandal, you can see Marcin motioning to the referee, but the referee has to win, as you say, a natural break in the action. So Luis Felipe Diaz was well within his rights to throw those shots. Third and final round. We both believe Luis Felipe Diaz needs to get the finish, so does he throw caution to the wind, which may get him the finish, but will leave him vulnerable to the takedown? From a, he doesn't want to do a glove touch. From what I've seen, Phil, he is going to go for it. He's going to try and knock his opponent out. Opens up with a flying knee that just grazed the chin of Bandal. Bandal a little bit wide-eyed still from that shot. Oh, just shy with the uppercut, but... Nice limp leg out. It's a little boost in the confidence there. Knowing you're not necessarily going to get it stuck on bottom. Big deep breath from Bomba. He's not used to going this deep into the round. And he may not be used to be getting a flying knee to the chin. Felipe Diaz really needs to put that pressure on. He's doing the right thing though, he's showing Bomba the uppercut, he's showing him the knee, he's trying to make him think twice about coming in for the takedown. All very intelligent work, but as the round progresses, you think he's really going to need to push the action. I think he's fighting the fight he wants to he wants to fight now. He's the taller fighter. He's got excellent footwork. He's using that distance. Trying different shots, different heights, different angles, different limbs. See where he can have the most success. And then every third shot or so he puts everything he's got behind it. A little bit of fatigue perhaps setting into Bomba here. He's taking big deep breaths with his mouth open. Getting hit in the head is tiring. Bomba's got to get those teeth together. He's got to bite down on his mouthpiece. There's a nerve that runs behind the jaw, and if your teeth aren't together, biting down, bad things can happen if you get hit in the chin. Yeah, it's like turning off a light switch. Diaz is a chin-hitting machine. As we said, seven of his wins have come by KO or TKO. May have taken Diaz a little bit of time to find his groove because this is the first time in his professional career he's fought out outside of his native Brazil. Landed well, a nice sharp shot there, managed to get out. Bomba tried to capitalize. Two minutes, Brave Nation. Diaz needs a knockout. He's now measuring his opponent very intelligently. He's got some shots he knows he can set up. Trying to work the body, then the head. Just under two minutes left to go. What can Luis Felipe do to try and snatch a, a victory from the jaws of defeat? Can Marcin Bantal survive the last couple of minutes here? Diaz is looking for a straight right or a knee to the chin. 
It's going to set both those up with something else. Something that looks to be completely different, a hook. Luis Felipe Diaz needs to be careful of ruling out, continuously ruling, or sorry, Marcin Bandal needs to be careful of ruling his head out to that side all the time, ruling out to his right side. A perfectly timed head kick could connect there. He lands, tries to land the big overhand and roll out to his right hand side. He's done that a couple of times. One minute, Brave Nation. Luis Felipe Diaz has under 60 seconds to land a knockout shot. He's really going to turn it up now. Almost like Bandal was conserving his energy for that final minute to score the takedown. In 28 fights, we may be seeing Marcin Bandal. Oh! No. The beginnings of a back take here. 30 seconds to work. How incredible would this be? Looking for a reversal now. Elbow looks safe from here. Marcin is out of danger. Point of the elbow looks safe from our position. That elbow is no longer in danger of being broken. He's just going to ride this one out and take a 30-27 win. You think you won the last round? You go 30-27? I would call this one 30-27. 28-29. I'm going to give this round to, to Diaz. So for only the fifth time in a 29 fight career, Bandal goes to the judges. Frustration on the face for low and bigger cut by Felipe Diaz. I misspoke, by the way. 29-28. We are unanimous. There was that flying knee. Diaz was so close a couple of times to scoring that knockout. But Marcin Bandel got tremendous conditioning, tremendous heart, had a winning plan in this fight. Thanks to Monster Zim for these great replays. It was a beautiful knee and a little bit of a slip. Baba wasn't able to fully capitalize on that. We're getting the top view now. Very close, very close. A couple of centimeters more. Could have been the end of the bout. This was a case where both fighters had considerable jet lag coming into the fight. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible co-main event on our historic night. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for this amazing bout. Your first judge scored about 29-27. Second judge scores about 29-28. And your third judge scores about 29-28. For your winner, by unanimous decision, out of the red corner, Marcin Bamba Bantel! <laughs>
representing Kill Cliff FC and Top Team Salzburg and fighting out of Austria. Please welcome challenger number two, Ismail, the Austrian Wonder Boy. No! For referee instructions, it's the bandit, Decky Larkin. Gentlemen, you've been over the instructions. Listen to my commands at all time, obey my instructions. Any questions regarding the rules? Any questions? If you want to touch gloves, let's do this. Slight bend in it, and the arm's free. Good switch to the only plot there. Again, attacks, attacks the ball. Oh, yeah. oh, the top. He got it. The 19th first round finish, or the 20th first round finish in the career of Norsi Bandal. The 19th by way of submission, ladies and gentlemen, the most dangerous submission specialist in the history of BTF. Marcin Bomba Bandao is going to use super welterweight champion. Oh, we don't have to hit him with a hell of it. They got to be some sort of benefit. They got to show me seven and four. They ain't got my friend on break. We do whatever it takes. Don't you make no mistakes. Tonight. Look how we started. We pick up the pace. Hey, we pick up the pace now. Got my foot on break now. This is my fan now. Let's say it loud. Give me the green light. I'm going to tell you. Great nation. The level of jiu-jitsu in Poland is extraordinary, as you saw. Tying his jiu-jitsu black belt around his waist is Marcin Mandel. The show we started. What an extraordinary display. The belt is now tied neatly around his waist. He's standing above us as the fans are treated to a replay. Look for one arm, it was denied, took the other one. Now Vendel is getting a hug from his coach who is actually a bear who shaves. In I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. As I'm well ready, I'm ready. Should. Lights are bright now, throw the confetti. The Hawk, Ahmed Shahid, offering his congratulations. Give me the green light. He said it, nobody thought this fight was going to end. After five rounds with a decision, and it did not. Exactly what happened, we're just about to find out. All right, Brave Nation, another dramatic finish inside the Brave CF 63 cage. This main event championship bout comes to an end at one minute and 20 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by armbar. And no! Brave Combat Federation Super Welterweight. Champion of the world, Marcin Bamba Bandel!